Hey, hey, and welcome to day two on our five days workshop of how to heal your hormones naturally. So yesterday we've been all talking about the, uh, natural rhythms. So you know uh, everything about the infradian and circadian rhythm, and you know how it's affecting your hormone and how important it is to actually synchronize with all your rhythms and not go against it. So today we are going to talk about the food so you can see how the food can affect your hormones and what you might be doing even without knowing it that uh, contributed to your hormones being off the balance and i'm going to tell you what to do actually to reverse it because everything everything is reversible <laughs> almost to god it is in nature everything is reversible except death obviously so uh, we are focusing on food so the very important thing you have to know is the high glycemic food. They are the ones that are affecting your hormones. The ones that raise up your blood sugar, you know? So they are the ones that are uh, contributing uh, to fluctuation of the hormones and to a uh, rise of the estrogen. But about this very uh, shortly. So what are high sugar food? They are, for example, white bread, refined sugar, which is obvious, syrup uh, and fruit juice even, white rice that is full of sugar, all the sauces like the ketchup sauces, every sauces that we are probably using except the handmade, uh, it's all added sugar in them. And of course, our chocolate. So all the good things. <laughs> and for the girls who uh, sign up to my uh, biohacking endometriosis, you know uh, about the food psychology. So you know why we are craving the uh, sweet things and you know it's normal because we've got uh, many, many different types of hunger. So increased levels of insulin affects the way how estrogen is metabolized. So if you're consuming a lot of uh, this food that are spiking your blood sugars, that affects your level of insulin. And... If the levels of insulin are nice, not stable, it means your body got the problems with metabolizing estrogen. If it, and if your body can't metabolize estrogen, it will build it up. And eventually it's going to cause the estrogen dominance. And too high estrogen is endometriosis. Every single girl have too high estrogen. And what the doctors are doing, they are prescribing you a progesterone instead of actually addressing the cause of why, why and the girls have too high estrogen. There's the reason why. So don't just put the plaster like on open wound, just actually start healing wounds. Do you know what I mean? So these foods also increase inflammation, creating more health problems. That's why anti-inflammatory diet has to be the must and is something we cannot avoid. So these are the health problems that are associated with the foods that are spiking your insulin. Endometriosis as the consequences of uh, uh, problems with metabolizing insulin, you've got the problems of metabolizing estrogen that leads to endometriosis and all other hormonal diseases. It also leads to the weight gain. That's why uh, girls who are going on the keto and stopping sugar altogether, they're going to find out that they're losing weight very quickly and very rapidly. It's also caused the type 2 of diabetes. And diabetes and at least two of the types of diabetes are absolutely reversible. So what to do? Eating protein in each meal is very important to balance your hormones. So what are the proteins? Of course, the meat which the best one is fish, the most healthy ones, is also the egg, the beans, legumes, and all the pulses. So they are the lean proteins. And avoid red meat. Red meat has a lot of added hormones because unfortunately we are living in the world uh, where everything is mass production. So even the meat industry became exactly this industry. So they are uh, stuffing those poor animals with hormones, to, uh, grown hormones to make them grow as quick as possible. And at the end, we are consuming it. And this is affecting our hormones. 
our hormonal balance, you know? So the red meat is very bad for you. All the processed food, dairy and alcohol, which if you're following anti-inflammatory diet, you know, these are the things from the red list that we, we should be avoiding. Fiber promotes blood sugar and insulin control. Fiber, fiber, fiber. So a lot of greens and uh, a lot of a cereal and all that jazz, you know? So this is basically the end, a very short video, but I'm gonna recap everything for you, okay? So the things that are messing up with your hormones are the, the foods that are causing uh, trouble with uh, processing the sugars and they're spiking your insulin. If there is the problem with insulin, insulin resistance, there is a very likely problem uh, with uh, processing uh, hormones and processing estrogen, and that can lead to very big consequences. So girl, you can undo it 100%. What you have to do? Make anti-inflammatory diet a lifestyle. This is not something what we are trying on for one week or two, like a pair of gloves. It's something what we have to embody and we have to become because unfortunately the stakes are too high and we are fighting for our health and our future. So it's something that you have to take very, very seriously. I'm gonna see you in another day when I'm gonna point out another thing that are messing up with your hormones and the ways how you can control it and reverse it. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Please share it with every girl who needs to know it because the doctor's not gonna tell you that. And this kind of workshop, people are actually charging money for this. and. I don't think it's ethical. That's why I'm giving you everything for free so we can finish this year with a bank, okay? So share it with everyone and I'm gonna see you tomorrow.